from the oldest city in the USA, St. Augustine tonight, with our guest, Ted Kowalski, Ryan Murphy, musical guest, Tommy Bledsoe. Host Jorge Rivera. There's so much love in this room right now. I mean, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, as always, we start our show, St. Augustine Tonight, thanking people like Foxtrot Studios and uh, Garrett Brothers Home and Decor. Um, the Corazon that's been so wonderful with us. Also, our caterer is Trust the Bust. Yes, <laughs> their, their sign outside their, their food truck is Yum Yum Food, and you'll find out what all that is about when our, our guests get a chance to dabble into that. Another thing I wanted to thank was um, one of our producers is going back home to Colombia, Sebastian Jimenez, and uh, we're going to miss him tremendously. I really can't say if this show could have happened without uh, his expertise, his help, um, his advice. So Colombia is happy to get him again and we're sad to lose him. So um, hopefully he will come back to the States to work with us with some under, un, other wonderful projects. While we're talking about people, a lot of you also know uh, Shirley Colin Williams, who's a big supporter of our show. Uh, she's very ill right now. Um, and uh, I'd, I'd love you to have uh, her in your prayers, in your thoughts, because she is such a wonderful photographer and also such a big supporter of our show. Uh, our hearts go out with the GOP, who was attacked this week, with London, who had a big fire. A lot of things happening this week in, in, in the world. In the good news, we have that a guy in London has just figured out to operate a double-decker bus with coffee coffee grounds. Could you imagine a city like London smelling like coffee everywhere you go? Uh, I think this is awesome. I mean, it's a way because in London, what a lot of people who do sports, they ride their bikes and they do their jogging. What they're finding out is that they, uh, you know, the pollution is a little high in London, like all big cities, New York, you know, some of these Chinese cities, people have to wear masks. Uh, so having a city smelling like coffee, a guy who drives on coffee, I think it's a wonderful idea, wonderful idea. Also, if you heard in the news, Tesla, their stock has gone up 75%. And Tesla, who makes electric cars and also is in the SpaceX, sending uh, loads up to space and planning a mission to Mars, they have now, they're the, th the third richest car company in the world. It's Mercedes or Daimler, and then Volkswagen, and now Tesla which means everyone else is behind them. And also, the good news for them is their SUV, I don't know if you've seen their new SUV, it is the safest ever built, which means if you're in a catastrophic crash, there's a 93% that you'd walk away from that crash. So this is very impressive what that man is doing. Another thing, Batman is dead. Yeah, that's not a movie. Adam West passed away. And yesterday, L.A. beamed the Batman light up in the sky to um, say to Adam, hey, baby, we're going to miss you. We're going to miss you. Another news, the Chinese has shot a satellite into space that works with quantum. Um, to try to explain that to you, there's a way of using quantum, uh, well, it's beaming information through particles of light, if that makes any sense. So they were using photons. The farthest they were able to shoot a beam with information was 65 miles. The Chinese now hit 700 miles, which means it's going to change the world. Because that means that you could send information through the internet knowing that it cannot be intercepted and knowing it cannot be uncrypted, okay, or mean dismantle so that you can get that information. So that changed the name of the game. Apple is very quiet, but Apple has a driveless car. They are ready to release it soon. Uh, Mr. Cook is keeping very quiet. 
So pretty soon, you know, my mother is uh, four feet, nine inches. So when she's behind the steering wheel, it looks like a driverless car on the road. Uh, all you could see is our eyeballs, you know, just between that little part of the steering wheel. She doesn't drive anymore because she's gotten old, but I remember that watching her leave was like watching a driverless car leaving your driveway. Say, so I wonder where she's going and may the force be with you. Okay, so, so much for that. Now, another thing I wanted to say is, um, I don't know if you guys heard of the megastructure. This is amazing. About a year ago, NASA scientists uh, realized that they couldn't see all the uni universe by themselves. So they brought in all these amateur astronomers, okay, which are thousands of people around the planet. And the, one of, Kepler found something that was strange to them, all right? The way they find planets is very easy. If these lights are the sun, when you see a little interruption of that light, it means there's a body going in front of that star, okay? A planet like Jupiter would actually take away 1% of that light, okay? Now what happened with uh, Kepler was, and, and, and the interruption is usually lasts a couple of hours. What NASA suddenly found was a group of stars where there was an interruption by one object of over 20%. And it was not, it was random. You know, a planet just keeps a thing. They came to the conclusion that it could be an alien structure around a star that could be. I mean, that's a theory. So for NASA right now is it's either a phenomenon of alien world that we don't understand or it's a natural phenomenon we don't understand. But this month, there was another interruption in the light, but it was only this time 2%. So they're puzzled. And there's all sorts of theories out there. So if you get on the internet and put space megastructure, you're going to find all kinds of information. And if you like TED Talks, there's a wonderful TED Talk by NASA about the megastructure. So we don't have aliens on the show tonight. No, 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 no. We have humans. We have earthlings. And among them is Ted Kowalski, <laughs> Chef Ted, as they call him. We also have from the amphitheater Ryan Murphy. And our musical guests are Tommy Bledsoe and Joy Delia. Yes. Yes. This is going to be good. We're going to cut for some commercials. And when we come back, we're going to have tease you with some of the music of Tommy Bledsoe and Joe Delia. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be right back. At Martinez & Associates, we can help you with many things. Number one is income for life throughout your retirement which is very important. Number two would be Medicare choices, which are very confusing. Number three is a legacy for your loved ones. And finally, keeping you independent throughout retirement. My name is Tuli Martinez. Call this number. Y hablamos español. At St. Augustine Distillery, we're part of a new generation of American craft distillers. Family owned and operated, we are committed to making the best possible spirits using local agriculture. Our distillers make everything by hand, from mashing and blending to distilling and tasting each and every batch. We distill and bottle everything we sell, making sure that the spirits are just right before barreling and aging. Bottled by real people, we love showing our guests not only what we do, but why we do it. We're passionate about educating our guests to not only what goes into each bottle, but how to make the best possible cocktails. We love St. Augustine, and thanks to your purchases, we're able to give back to the community and help local organizations each and every day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. St. Augustine Distillery, handmade with pride in the nation's oldest city. All right, well, we're going to do a song here about St. Augustine, and we're going to get you to help us sing it. Can you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. All right, well, you'll find a place to put that in this song. This one called Summer in St. Augustine.
like any industry, the best known product is the one most frequently purchased. Think of industry leaders like Coke, Nike, and Starbucks. It's true in real estate too. The most successful realtors have strong personal brands. In fact, branding is especially important in the real estate industry. The National Association of Realtors tells us that reputation is the most important factor when choosing an agent, and another word for reputation is brand. It's not who you know, it's who knows you. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. Boy, Tommy and Joy, huh? That thing uh, Joy had, that was a strange artifact, but that made a wonderful sound. Yes, and I'm with our guest, Mr. Ted Kowalski. Good to see you again. Yeah, they know you around town as Chef Ted. That's it. Le Chef, Monsieur. Oui. Amazing. I first met you, you were doing a wonderful uh, act of kindness. You you were working there at the Sir, uh, uh, Sir Francis house. Saint Francis. Yeah, Saint Saint Francis. <laughs> I just made him a knight. <laughs> yes, uh, Saint Francis house. And uh, you were there working with uh, people who were trying to change their lives. You were introducing them into the culinary uh, business. Explain how that worked there. Well, um, initially when I relocated from Philadelphia to Saint Augustine, I took a job uh, as a culinary arts instructor on a part-time basis at First Coast Technical College. Right. And, and then that segued into this opportunity and then I spearheaded that program <clears throat> at St. Francis House and it's called Fresh Starts in Culinary Arts. Fresh Start in Culinary Arts. Right, mm -hmm. so we select six people that have the right capabilities and, uh, to, 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 and, and the need and the desire to improve their lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, we put them through a beautiful one month program. Wow, and some of these people were homeless at one time. They're, they're, they're absolutely, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and to be in that kitchen, the food Whoa. you guys were putting out was well, we, unbelievable. We did a nice job, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, uh, so we get six people, uh -huh. and uh, we suit them up with, with all uniforms that are provided by First Coast Technical College. Right. Um, and it's a one month program. First week, we teach them sanitation, okay. so they really understand, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, time and temperature, right. uh, microorganisms, yes. hand washing, sanitation, how to do things correctly. Right. And then they work with me from 6:45 in the morning till 10:45, preparing food for 150 homeless people with a zero-dollar food budget, which is amazing, <laughs> right? Today, at zero dollar. We we have a van and we have a, a gentleman who's got a route. And he goes to all our wonderful sponsors, uh, Publix and Winn Dixie, uh, Domino Pizza, God Long, bless them. Longhorn Steakhouse, uh -huh. uh, Second Harvest. We have all these suppliers. And uh, so the food flows through the back door and we sort it out. And we've got a big walk in freezer and a walk in refrigerator and dry storage. I saw that. I was very There's impressive. a lot of volunteers to keep yes. this stuff in order. And uh, then uh, I create a menu. Uh, what are we going to do three days from now? We start pulling stuff out of the freezer thawed out under proper conditions and we cook from scratch mm -hmm. and we make beautiful food for 150 people every day uh, from 10:45 till 12 we serve them mm -hmm. with volunteers that come in and we make the trays and everybody sits down in a sanitized room and they they eat and then it's great I'll, I'll show you pictures of some of the food that we've, yeah, yeah. we've Don't created. Don't they say love will save the world? I mean that I, I think you're that's employing homeless people to feed homeless yeah, people yeah. and uh, giving these other people the opportunity to learn this art, yeah, and uh, so yeah, yeah. Look at this. This, this is a little. Uh, every time we, uh, every day, I, I take pictures and we and document our food, and it's, uh, <clears throat> it's I'm really, hungry. Well, it, it, it's really a beautiful thing. <laughs> at one time, at one time, we had China plates, and they were all stolen. So now we, we're serving one of these <laughs> these blue uh, trays that remind me of the Navy or the Army or something. But it's uh, like someone said, the realities of living in the inner city. They all steal well, the plates. <laughs> but the good news is, uh, since it doesn't snow here, they don't steal these to slice, use for sleds, <laughs> as they would in Pennsylvania. You know? but, use uh, the trays as sleds, yeah. E exactly. Because well, you're originally from... Uh, 
Philadelphia. Yeah, Philadelphia. Right? Wow. Would Philly be your home? Would you call that home? Yeah, all around the Philadelphia area. I've lived in in the burbs, and yeah. uh, it was a wonderful and, and time. How did you get dragged into uh, uh, this thing? You know, that's my amazement with people here. Right. Why are you in opera? Why are you in music? Why are you in food? Well, y you know, it, it goes back to uh, what is your calling, and mm -hmm. once you find out what your calling is then you never have to work another day the rest of your life. True. You just do what you love. That is so and, true. And it's awesome. And it, it uh, kind of came from my grandmother, who was a magnificent uh, lady and a wonderful cook. Mm -hmm. She had 10 children. She, from, she came from Poland. She couldn't even read English. Wow. But she could cook. I mean, <laughs> unbelievable. Her language was the kitchen. It was, and, uh, and, and 20 people could show up and had a drop of a hat, and she could handle it. Oh, my God. She had a hotel at one time in, in, Philadelphia, in Reading, Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, I think during Prohibition, my grandfather used to make uh, booze in a bathtub in the back, <laughs> and, uh, and they had a hotel, and uh, my father says hearsay that, uh, you know, after Prohibition, you could come to her bar room at the hotel, and if you bought a beer for a nickel, you got your sandwich for free at lunchtime. Oh, wow. So that was a different Is time. Is that deal still on for a nickel? Uh, well, I'll, you know, it's a little... I'll drive all the way to Reading. It's a little bit of a different, <laughs> different uh, economy back oh, then. Oh, wow. So, uh, but she was great. And, uh, you know, you kind of get it, you know. You, you have your calling. And Did you, you help her or was it you watching her Yeah, you watch her. Well, I was a little guy, yeah. you know. But you watch and you steal with your eyes and then you I got smell it. smell those wonderful... Yeah. 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 New York City, I love to go to those, uh, you know, diners. There are diners owned by Italians, diners owned by Greeks, but you or knew Turks. the Polish diet about the kielbasa sausage, uh, man. Awesome. Kielbasa and gawumkis uh -huh. and pierogis. Oh. When I was in Poland a few years ago, I, 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 I really ex keep, I eat all over the world uh -huh. and to expand my uh, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. your background and uh, knowledge. But uh, they have uh, not only savory you know, pierogis with potato and cheese and the ones we usually get with sauerkraut and potato. Mm -hmm. they, have, they have dessert ones. You can get them with cherries and oh, blueberries wow. Wow. with like a little uh, sweet cream inside. Yeah, well. it's like when I went to France and found <clears throat> that, you know, a crepe could be anything in it. Oh, absolutely. I thought it was just, just like, you know, chocolate or something a little bit. But it's uh, whatever it can hold. Yeah. Yeah. And that's uh, almost a street food uh, yeah. over, over in Paris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see it everywhere. Everywhere. But, um, yeah, really great stuff. Really and so, great stuff. And so... When did you, did you go to school? Uh, yeah, uh, right, right out of high school, college prep, blah, blah, blah. I got counseled to go uh, to the Culinary Institute of America, mm. which is the Harvard of yes. cooking uh, for la the crème, world. La and la uh, so when I was at CIA, um, I was either cooking full-time at Yale University or cooking full-time at CIA and studying. Wow. And I applied myself and loved it. And, and in summer times, and after school, I, I went to, uh, worked in a French restaurant in Philadelphia. Ah, that's uh, French the, cuisine. On the birds, it was great. It's called yeah. Wilson's L'Auberge. Uh-huh. We What's it, L'Auberge? L'Auberge. That means the inn in oh, French, Oh, yeah. okay. So we were the finest restaurant in the uh, Philadelphia area. Wow. Uh, wonderful uh, uh, people that did consulting to our facility. Okay. Uh, James Beard, one. He walks with the God of Foods. Yes. Uh, you live and die on his critique. Cra yes. Craig Claiborne from the New York Times. The, another one. You so live and die on his these critique. These are guys that I knew when I was young, and uh, I didn't realize the capacity and who they really were, uh -huh. but uh, it was really great. And then eventually I, I got drafted and went in the Navy. Uh, okay, what was that, Vietnam? The Vietnam, yeah. yeah, I did one year over there, but mm. uh, yeah, then right back to food, you know, when wow. I came back. So when you came back, you know, that's, I think that's always a challenge for a serviceman that comes from overseas and he comes on, throws his duffel bag, gives his girlfriend his wife a big kiss, yeah, I yeah. missed you. And then you have to say, <clears throat> you know, I mean, some people lose their, their businesses because they're oh, sure. away, you know. Right, so right. you came back to what? I jumped right back into kitchens, managing kitchens, and uh, I ran St. Joe's University Kitchen. Wow. I, a couple of really high-end uh, geriatric centers, senior living places. Mm -hmm. Then I went into food sales, and I was back and forth between managing kitchens and selling food. Which did and you and think enjoyed more? more money in selling food. Well, yeah, but which one did you enjoy more? Uh, well, you know, when you're hands-on and you're producing something that creates joy and uh, w f is, is more gratifying. But then, of course, the money's more gratifying when you're making mm -hmm. big money. In, in, My in father always say, if you make a dinner, yeah. a meal, yeah. with lots of love, mm -hmm. that energy comes right into the food. Oh, it does. It's incredible. And, and you can tell... Yeah. 
just, it could be something so simple, right. but it'll taste so delicious. Yeah. Because it's just made with all this love. Well, I'm kind it. of passionate about cuisine from globally. Uh -huh. You know, I, I love French food. I love German food, Eastern European food. I've, I've worked in Chinese restaurants. Uh, my, my best friend in Philly is a guy named Joe Poon. Mm -hmm. So I worked with Joe Poon for a couple of months of Saturdays, 12 hour days to get my arms around Chinese just, just for it's fun. It's a science, yeah. yeah and then he took me to China for a couple of weeks. Oh! You know, it was like, you know, and you have now to do Now you're that. in a real, uh, yeah. yes. Hong Kong, Macau, Beijing. Oh, wow. You know, yeah, Hong it, Kong it is just, a huge eating place. Never been to Macau, but I've been to Hong it, Kong. It's, it's wonderful, like, yeah. It's like, what not to eat? And they eat everything. Oh, uh, they do. They I eat do. scorpions. <laughs> <laughs> I eat fried scorpions. You know, and shrimp about this big that swim like eels. You know, uh -huh. right? Yes, they eat everything. Yeah, Those Chinese do. markets are amazing. And everything's live. Yes. You know, Fresh. when you go to a seafood restaurant, there's a big aquarium. Mm -hmm. And they swim by and you point to them and they grab them and whack them. And, and he says, no, don't no, point at me, me, please. <laughs> <Don't>, right. <laughs> Two minutes later, you're having this incredible steamed Fresh. fish. And, yes. uh Yes. And it's just wonderful yes. stuff, you and, know. And, and the really stuff they, they, they think. So when you look at the future, what do you see for Mr. Chef the Ted? Yeah, Chef Ted. What do you see? Well, you know, even at the present, I'm a retired guy now. Yeah, know? right. But, Everybody but, comes here and tells me they're retired and they're inventing It doesn't the really, world. yeah. Retirement doesn't really work. No. So I have, like, I have little jobs. You little know, jobs. I do consulting. I design kitchens with an architect. Okay. Uh, I'm doing one at the Hammock Dunes Club right now. A kitchen and a new bar, $6 uh -huh. million dollar renovation. Wow. Beautiful. Wow. It's going to be great. Um, I work for a German oven manufacturer. Mm -hmm. I'm very passionate about that. Okay. They're called Rationale. Rationale. And they're from uh, Munich. Munich. So, um, I'm Ruskot, a yes. I'm a Rational Certified Chef, and okay. I either do pre sale or post sale okay. cooking demonstrations. Okay. I'm doing one next week uh, down in uh, Naples. Wow. At some place called the Kensington wow. Country Club. That's Real awesome. High and you're headed, are you headed back to uh, St. Francis House eventually? Uh, yes. Late fall, early winter, their building will be reconstructed from the hurricane damage. And we're going to start, yes, we're gonna they start got this whacked. program again. Yes, yeah. they had to re redo everything. And to revisit that, you know, now that we'd be cooked for this 150 people every day, um, and I want to show you the, uh, this is the, we, we, we have them certified in this safe staff. Now this is the standardized sanitation course that people take mm -hmm. to become food handlers in Florida. Yes, the Florida and Restaurant and Lodging Association. Right, yes, right. So they seal. get the certificate, is, and uh, it's on the back page. Uh, so once they get a hundred in the test, so you get the nice little diploma and one for their uh, wallet. So when they go out to get a job, you know they're already uh, That's they have it. a leg they got up the on seal the, of the king. Yeah, so it's well, good stuff. This is great, Ted. And you know we've run out of time. Oh, we did. Okay. I will. I will good. bring you back because look at you. You we, are just equipped with all this information. <laughs> I mean, that, uh, give a hand to the man. I mean, hope everybody had a little fun think, tonight. But he gives to the community. That's why I brought him because when I saw him there and I saw the love in that kitchen, those kids just love you to death. Yeah. And every word you say, well, they, they just gather around you. It's like a huddle. Every time you say, <laughs> they don't come they in. They get a know? job, and that's well, what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. They love you. And I saw when you gave the certificates and you had the little ceremony for that's them. That's what it's all about. I, yeah. I, was, I was very touched by that. And I said, if I ever have a show, I'm going to bring this good man to our show. I have another great kitchen at, Saint, at uh, Trinity Episcopal Parish. Oh, okay. I saw your kitchen, kitchen at home. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Mamma mia. My pleasure. All right. Thank it's always you. always a pleasure. You're awesome. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. And we'll be back after these messages.
And I just have to say In my life I love that woman Cause she's more than I deserve And she gets me where I live I'll give all I have to give I'm talking about that hummingbird All right, people, we're back. After those messages. And our other guest for uh, tonight is Ryan Murphy. Yes. Yes. And uh, Ryan, as you know, uh, well, I'll let him uh, tell you. Ryan, uh, you run what? What is the thing you run around town? Well, uh, there's a couple things. Um, <laughs> but the main one I run is the St. Augustine Amphitheater. That's it. That mm -hmm. is huge, people. <laughs> That is a magnet of music. And tell us, and you're also involved with the uh, Panavidra Concert Hall also? Panavidra Concert Hall as well. Mm -hmm. and so when do you sleep, I guess would be I the don't, question. I don't, I have an 18 month old who <laughs> oh, oh, makes oh. it even worse. Sad to but, the mix, yeah. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And tell us, where are you originally from? I'm originally from Daytona Beach, oh, wow. but I don't claim that often. Um, <laughs> I spent most, <laughs> most of my years, most of my life in Gainesville oh. and in upstate New York. So, uh -huh. Gainesville is a real music place, isn't it? Is, it? Because it is. of the university. It is. I actually cut my teeth there as far as being in the music business, working at a record label, oh, wow. working at a couple music venues, mm -hmm. kind of helping develop music venues, traveling the world. What so, kind of groups joined your record label? Can you remember? Um, there, a lot of underground bands are up and coming around Gainesville at that time. Right, it was yeah. kind of a launching pad label. All right, right. Mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. And so how did you end up? With the this this job has so much responsibility. It's such a big operation. Yeah, it's a it's it's a funny path I took. I actually was going to grad school for bilingual education, hmm. and um, which, yeah, I'm not using that degree, <laughs> that master's degree right now. But um, I ended up working with some people over here that are working on festivals, and I knew of bands, and I had worked with bands. That was kind of like a side note of what I was doing, and I ended up a job opportunity opened up with the county at the amphitheater, and I took it and. Wow. Seven and a half years later, here I am. Wow, yeah. seven and a half years. Seven and a half years, yeah. What, what do you think is the most challenging thing for you in that kind of line of work? Um, it's interesting. It's two different worlds. It's, it's uh, the music industry, right. which is fickle. Uh -huh. And um, there's a lot of personalities. Mm -hmm. And a lot of... Uh, Madonnas. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And then there's the county government side mm, of it and okay. those two things i mean it's kind of a square peg and a round hole sometimes trying to operate but we figure it out um we got a great crew over there mm -hmm. and we're just all we we solve problems a lot and uh, -huh. uh you know we try to be proactive we're very community minded everyone that works there for the most part has has been here a long time has ties to the community really right. cares about the community so that's a big about aspect. how many how many people compose your your, your team uh, the, um, the staff we have right now is about 20 to 22 people full time okay. mm -hmm. All right. on and a day to day basis. Now, How long has that amphitheater been there in some shape, way or form? It's been there a little over 50 years at this point. Mm -hmm. No so. one would think that thing is there for half a century. Mm -hmm. wow. Not the way. A lot, a lot of people remember the, the former amphitheater that they built in 1965 when they built it um, and they started having the cross and sword play there mm -hmm. for decades. I even remember growing up in Daytona, field trips going up there. Huh. But, um, but in its current incarnation, it's going on 10 years. And uh, Tommy wow. Bledsoe knows all about that. <laughs> yes, Tommy was involved with that organization <laughs> was, at some was. point. Mm -hmm. Wow, and I yeah. saw that you guys, so that whole structure is kind of new to what it was. Mm -hmm. But you could see it from the, uh, from the lighthouse Everyone yeah. says, what's that down there? I said, that's the amphitheater, and they don't realize yeah, how it's, big it is. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Um, the, the whole canopy, the way it was constructed, was really well done. To this point, um, the city of Key West, the city of Miramar, Tallahassee, there's been a bunch of people that have been coming over and consulting. Mm. And if you go to those cities now, you'll see a lot of amphitheaters that look a lot like ours. Wow. So we've, so. we've shared a ton of information with them. And, okay. Yeah, now. How, how many people does that amphitheater hold for a concert, basically? A little over 4,000. Wow, that's big. Now, you do have a place there where you do a, a, a smaller venue. Do we you? do. We started, we're trying to do, utilize the space and make sure we can have any event, whether it be 100, 200 people to 4,000. So wow. we have a backyard stage. Right. We just constructed a front porch. Yes, that is so cool. Yeah, people love it. Oh, yeah. yeah it's, uh, the porch, explain what the porch is, so people might not know. So the porch was an area, as you're coming up to the amphitheater, it's, um, 
it's it's to the right. There was current there was just kind of some shrub brush and we built a wooden deck all around the trees. Patrick Canan was actually one of the sponsors that came in and helped pay for it. Mm -hmm. But um it's great. It's an area you can go before shows and enjoy a drink. Or we're going to start having free concerts there. It's oh gonna wow! Be it is so mm -hmm. Florida. I mean, it's yeah. this giant deck with these wonderful chairs. Have a drink under the trees in the shade, yeah. and I, I, yeah, I went when they opened it to look at it, and I said, I like this yeah. very much. Very people, much. people love it. And, mm -hmm. and so, how did you get? Well, here's one question: Do you play an instrument? I do. Which is? Guitar. Guitar. Mm -hmm. And how did you get drawn to the guitar? Um, uh, in a roundabout way. I think my dad always played guitar, and okay. he tried to teach me at a young age, and I rejected it. And, um, <laughs> That's he, usually kids yeah. though, right? Or I'd ask him, and then I was like, I'd get bored quickly. But he inspired me constantly with music around the house by playing records, and he was a real influence as far as the records yeah, he plays. Still, me he is. would share the, the mm -hmm. album cover yeah, with we, you. Yeah, we'd sit, and he'd explain so songs. Awesome. Yeah. And um, so awesome. take me to concerts all the time. And then eventually I started picking up the guitar and teaching myself okay. in my bedroom. And just, this um, is the way I'm going to do it. Uh, so, but yeah, it's always like parents tell us, like, that's old and archaic. No, I don't mm -hmm. want you ways. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. And so how did you get pulled into music to be so full time? Because you say you were in school for bilingual education, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, that, that was eventually. I got an English degree from University of Florida, then I got my master's in bilingual education. But I end up, I've always had a foot in the music business, whether I wanted to or not, working at a record label, being in bands, touring with bands, wow. working at venues. I guess, I mean, it's in my blood. Uh -huh. I've been doing it since I was 15. Wow. So. Are you in a band now? I am. Yeah, yeah. what's the name of the band? They're called Dead Airs. Dead Airs. Mm -hmm. And you guys just came from a little tour. <laughs> you guys? That's right. You guys can't. I don't talk about it often. But, <laughs> but what's the genre? Um, it's rock. Rock? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you guys just came from a little tour of a couple of cities. We do. Um, it's, it's a band made up of, of dads. So uh, <laughs> we all have young children and families that, you know, desperately want us home. But uh, we squeeze it in between work and we pick weekends where we can go out and we play around Florida. And this past, uh, this past month, we actually went up the West Coast. Or the East Coast and oh. played Brooklyn and Philly. Brooklyn, and New York. Brooklyn, New York. How yeah. did Brooklyn, New York treat you? It was great. Yeah, it was great. It's I love evolving. it. Evolving. Yeah. I'm from New York. I can't believe that Brooklyn is where it's at. It's just like everyone now thinks of living in Brooklyn. It's, yeah, it's different. It is it's different, different than it's been. <laughs> I yeah. remember when I used to go visit my cousins up yeah. in Brooklyn. It's like, all right, everybody, beware. We're going into Brooklyn. You yeah. know. So yeah. now it's uh, wow, wow, wow. So. What do you see the future for the amphitheater when you look at what it's being planned and stuff like that? Um, I see, I, I think what we're doing currently is great, but I think we're constantly looking to evolve, constantly looking to do things in the community. The things that s helps us stand out is that we are a community run venue mm -hmm. and we are county employees that work there. So we're constantly looking at things we can do working with nonprofits. You know, we work, work with Epic a lot. We have a lot of nonprofit events we bring in the kids camps, we have a kids art camp, we have a kids music camp. Awesome. Stuff like that is really exciting. I want to do back. more of that. Mm -hmm. If, if I was to have um, the ability to create an on-site educational building, to kind of bring in kids in a, a full-time capacity, I look at like Ruth Eckerd Hall over in Clearwater is a good example. They have a beautiful facility. They work well with the city. And during the day, they have these beautiful this beautiful facility that teaches ballet and wow. dance and music and wow. art. Almost like and an art sets. center. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's really cool. I'd like to see that be part of it, but that's, mm -hmm. that's pretty, that's, yeah. it's it's pretty it's large scale. An idea, <laughs> yeah, when you start crunching numbers yeah. and everything, the idea gets more layers and more complicated. Yeah, yeah. but okay. for now, I mean, I, I like that we, we're a large, well-respected music venue, concert yeah. venue in the music yes, industry. Yes, and you so. do. You, it's funny because you'll bring in a, a, a band that played in the 60s, right? Mm -hmm. That could still hold a tune. And then you'll bring something current. Yeah. It's that balance like to, to um, please the baby boomers and yeah. please the millennials. It's true. And it's true. It's important. I think a lot of people don't get that. In the beginning, there was a lot of concerts that appealed to the baby boomers because it was seen as the, the largest right. disposable income. And you look at you markets, know. yes. Yeah, yes. So, but there's a lot of millennials and younger people coming and I think the more we tap into it and the more you see the connection. I mean, there's going to be a ton of young people at Paul Simon 
because they know Paul Simon has directly influenced so much of the music mm -hmm. that they enjoy. Right. So seeing the you seeing parents bring their kids to a concert, right. that's the coolest thing. Yeah. Because I see my dad bringing me. Uh huh. Uh huh. Because that's mm -hmm. a, you remember your first concert. I do. It was 1981. I saw Devo play. Uh, Devo. Uh, boom, 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 boom. That was good. Boom, boom. And my dad, um, because they wore those red hats, my dad let me dump out one of the flower pots on the front porch, <laughs> and I got to wear it on my head. And that was, that was cool. That I do picture, remember that. That's that picture old. on Facebook would be priceless. My <laughs> I'll, right, I'll recreate it. Uh, uh, it's just going to, you know, that is funny. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. you told me a really funny, yeah, we're running out of time, but you did tell me a funny story about Paul Simon, something you guys gave Paul Simon because yeah. he's a baseball freak. A yeah, kid. so I was actually talking about this last night. We had the Gypsy Kings at the amphitheater mm. as well. They're they fantastic. And yeah. um, they talked about how much they love the St. Augustine Amphitheater, and we're constantly trying to make our mark and stand out among other venues. And one thing we do specifically for the artists is, we give them posters. We do a limited run of silkscreen design posters specific to the artist. They'll sign one and we hang it up in catering. And so we do it for everyone. And um, uh, uh, Paul Simon, we, knowing he was a huge Yankees fan, our designer designed a poster after a Mickey Mantle baseball card. Wow. And one side of it was Paul Simon with a Yankees cap sitting in a dugout, a picture of him. And then the other side was him as a young kid throwing a baseball, looked just like the, a Mickey Mantle baseball card. And they took uh -huh. the P and the S and shaped it like the NY. And he flipped out. He loved it. <laughs> he loved it. You and framed so, these for them? Yeah. The, uh, yeah. So we, we gift it wow. to them and they love it. And they end up leaving one for the venue and wow. they'll give the friends and family. But I've heard stories about people visiting all around the country, seeing different artists in their homes or studios and seeing the amphitheater posters framed. Wow. And that's pretty cool. They keep it and they, they cherish that, it. So. That is awesome. You yeah. know, we will have you here again because that place is a constant universe yeah. with exploding stars and black holes and everything. So cool. we we'll definitely have you back. Thank you. Thank you. Ryan Murphy. Thank you. Love. As a, as a musician running a place like that, I think it's an excellent idea. We'll be back <laughs> after these messages. At St. Augustine Distillery, we're part of a new generation of American craft distillers. Family owned and operated, we are committed to making the best possible spirits using local agriculture. Our distillers make everything by hand, from mashing and blending to distilling and tasting each and every batch. We distill and bottle everything we sell, making sure that the spirits are just right before barreling and aging. Bottled by real people, we love showing our guests not only what we do, but why we do it. We're passionate about educating our guests to not only what goes into each bottle, but how to make the best possible cocktails. We love St. Augustine, and thanks to your purchases, we're able to give back to the community and help local organizations each and every day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. St. Augustine Distillery, handmade with pride in the nation's oldest city. At Martinez & Associates, we can help you with many things. Number one is income for life throughout your retirement, which is very important. Number two would be Medicare choices, which are very confusing. Number three is a legacy for your loved ones. And finally, keeping you independent throughout retirement. My name is Tuli Martinez. Call this number. Y hablamos español. In any industry, the best-known product is the one most frequently purchased. Think of industry leaders like Coke, Nike, and Starbucks. It's true in real estate, too. The most successful realtors have strong personal brands. In fact, branding is especially important in the real estate industry. The National Association of Realtors tells us that reputation is the most important factor when choosing an agent. And another word for reputation is brand. It's not who you know, it's who knows you. <laughs> All right, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. We're back with uh, Tommy Bledsoe and Joy Delia. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, wow, you guys, I'm so happy to have you guys here. I see you guys always around town. I see you at the Cluster Pluck at Dawes. Yeah, we Cluster Pluck. I, I've yeah. seen you play in other functions. You're going to have and, to explain that one. Uh -huh, <laughs> yes. Uh, well, you explain what the Cluster Pluck well, is. Uh, the, the Cluster Pluck is just a gathering of friends and, uh, and other people, <laughs> the people who wander by. It's a big jam session. It's an excuse to get people together to play music. 
We have uh, once a month right. at Dos uh, Coffee and Wine, 300 San Marco. Uh -huh. uh, it's a great little place to uh, just to come jam. in. To jam. To jam. It's bluegrass and old time music. Uh, and there are uh, there are no expectations <laughs> <laughs> and no promises, but it's a, it's a really fun get together. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Every uh, you see banjos, guitars, mandolins, uh, fiddles, bass, yeah, fiddles. Bass, yeah. uh, I mean, it's wonderful. Bro, bro, yeah. Yeah. A friend of ours actually wants to come to the next one and do freeform tap dancing. Oh, yeah. let's yeah. throw it in. Yeah. You know, let's yeah. throw yeah. an yeah. onion into of, the souffle. Yeah. <laughs> yes, why not? Um, and so, Joe, your full name, uh, Joy. Joy Delia. And yours? Tommy Ray Bledsoe. Tommy Ray. That's yes. a troublemaker. That, name that's now. <laughs> yeah, I think Tommy Ray's responsible. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think my dad got lazy, you know. He didn't want to do this Thomas Raymond thing. You know? Oh, he just Tommy, Tommy Ray. Ray so. oh, it's that's Tommy, gonna, not short for Tom. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really Tommy. And the birth certificate... Yeah, uh, we'll oh, ask you. Uh, do I? You, you want to see my birth certificate now? <laughs> That's a big thing now. Is it? Everyone has to show their birth certificate. You can go now. get it. I, that <laughs> oh wow! But but you guys, you you, you play. Yes. What? <laughs> <laughs> my voice is my best instrument. Okay. To be okay. perfectly honest, I play a little bit of violin, a little bit of bass, and of course bones, which is yes. We're called skin and bones, and. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, we I saw that when you guys played the number. They, they, it's amazing how those things in your hand, uh, they remind me of the Spanish uh, castanuela. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Percussion. But, but yeah, it is. I call it a caveman instrument. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's bones. It's, bones. it's, it's yeah. bones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, Ted Kowalski could probably, he's got a, a, a source for those. <laughs> Save us some ribs. Save us some ribs. ribs. <laughs> yeah, send us some ribs that yeah. are uh, hollow inside yeah. if possible. And you also play a ukulele. Yes, I'm learning ukulele. Yeah. You're learning ukulele. Yeah. And your instruments are what? I play instruments with strings on them and, and harmonica. Um, I play banjo, fiddle, guitar, a little mandolin, dobro, bass, uh, dulcimer, whatever, <laughs> auto harp. Show me an instrument with strings on it and I, I can get a tune out. Oh, wow. I, I'm an expert at none, but I keep would, myself would, happy. Would you say there's one that's your baby? Oh boy! Well, I love banjo. the banjo, uh, but yeah, yeah. I, I love the banjo, but I want to be a it. I want to be a fiddle player. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Wow. And so, how how did you guys meet? Oh my, that's a we met here. That's we like met, what's the meaning of the universe? He yeah. lived in Virginia. I lived down here, and he used to come down here and come to the restaurant that I owned with my first husband, mm -hmm. who you should have on. Yeah. Um, and we knew each other over the years, and. I don't know, 10 years later, we were both unattached. Uh -huh. and, and we attached. And you attached. <laughs> we were unattached. And that, and, and that was 28 years ago, just wow. last week. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations. <Yeah>. Congratulations. <laughs> and but how did I end up in St. Augustine is a better story. Really? How did you end up in St. Augustine? With my first husband, we were visiting Florida, trying to find some friends, and we were driving down Bridge Street, went through a stop sign, and hit a car of nuns. <laughs> <laughs> what a holy incident. <laughs> so St. Joseph's nuns them. are why I, I live in St. Augustine. Uh, While the truck was getting fixed, we decided to stay here. Oh my <laughs> Lord, <laughs> divine <laughs> intervention, <laughs> definitely. It definitely. was, you might say oh. that. <laughs> wow, and, and, uh, but you're originally from where? Connecticut. Oh wow, Connecticut, cut, 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 cut. I yeah. always the say. The Gold Coast. Yes, Greenwich, my daughter lives there. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. Sonia. And you're originally from where? From Virginia, from the very southwestern corner of Virginia, in That's the mountains, the Appalachian. The Appalachian Mountains. mountains. Yeah, I call it Appalachian. You can call it Appalachian <laughs> if you want to be incorrect. <laughs> okay. It's like no. people with Kentucky. Is that? Yeah. It's Kentucky or yeah. Missouri. <laughs> and people say Missouri and yeah. there are, uh, New Orleans. I think yeah. there's another one, New, New Orleans. Orleans, yeah. New Orleans yeah. Yeah. Well, there's the interesting there. thing about Appalachian Mountains is that they were named for a, a tribe from, a people from Florida. Mm. Because when Hernando de Soto was chasing, uh, was coming up the, the interior of Florida on his uh, Conquistadore mission, mm -hmm. uh, the Appalachian people ran from him. They took off and headed north, mm -hmm. and he chased them until they disappeared into those mountains, uh -huh. and those mountains forever have wow. been called Appalachian. Uh, wow. 
So wow. the, Your no history lesson. No of charge today. for the history no, lesson. But there's history it, there. It's worth what you paid for it. But that is a source of music, that whole area. You know, as, as the propagandists that told oh, they're so poor, right? I mean, they're so poor, keep them poor because they're putting out some incredible music <laughs> yeah. that's coming out of there. Yeah, there's, there are economic challenges, mm -hmm. uh, as there are here oh. in Florida, hey, by the way. I'm from New York. Uh, Go into some of these neighborhoods. <laughs> so, but we do have the reputation you know, of, the, of, the, of poverty, but it's, there's a rich man, richness of culture and spirit that is, you know, the, again, it's found everywhere, but uh, it's sometimes overlooked. Yeah. But and the music is part of that. Right. The music, the dance, the stories. Now, was the, music in your yeah. family? Yes. Um, for as long as I can remember, music was a part of any family gathering. Wow. Uh, gran my grandmother was a banjo player and a, and a singer, <laughs> and, and my grandfather, and, and my dad was constantly singing. So, so yes. his instrument was, was his all, voice. His mm -hmm. was, yes, yes. until yes. much later. But, but there were other, uh, you know, string instruments, banjo, guitar, mm -hmm. and fiddle, and uh, that sort of thing. Right. Mostly, yeah. And your last name is Delia, which is Italiano. Italian as and they And then come. music and Italy, food and music, are, and wine are the three, uh, the uh, triangle that keeps it together. throughout our entire family, wow. extended, you know, immediate, um, you know, my brother still plays in a band. Right. Um, and mom my and dad? Cousins. Mom and dad? My dad sang. My okay. mom played piano. Wow. She used to play us piano as we went to sleep. So I, I think families, when you memory. grow up in families where music is so, so abundant, mm. I think that just makes a wonderful way to grow up. I mean, that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. Well, you know? it was, you know, and yeah. they, you know, my extended family today, cousins and their children are in school for, mm -hmm. um, Piano, uh, yeah, composition, um, majoring you know, in music, music education, and education. so, mm -hmm. it, it just so goes it's right down. it's still. Now, you, you guys have children? Yes. yes. And and, and how, how many? Ten, twelve? <laughs> Come on, how many? Well, I have a daughter from a first marriage, okay. and we have two Boy. daughters. Yeah. Okay, and and are they in the arts in any way, shape, or form? Um, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. they are. I, I, mean, I like that. It's almost like. You know, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, they are really. I mean, uh, they they grew up here in this very artistic community. Mm -hmm. They went to St. Augustine High School. Were involved in the Center for the Arts. Okay. One of them was involved in the St. Augustine Ballet and the Abella School of Arts. Oh, he's, was, he was. He's it, been one yeah, of our guests. I saw he's him. Wonderful. Yeah, he was. Uh, she was his one of his first students when he opened his ballet oh, studio. Wow. And she just finished, uh, got her degree in dance from Florida State. She's living in New York, and <sighs> the other one's in Seattle working for. Uh, the North Face and using that oh. artistic. Uh, I traveled the uh, world the, the with a North Seattle Face. The one in Seattle once said she really enjoys the arts and she would love to have it's made not a too living late. in the arts, but she wanted to make money. <laughs> 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 she, she figured that yeah, out. She pretty grew pretty up in an arts family. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, my, my dad would do that. We'd go walk in the Greenwich Village and there'd all be these guys. At that time, they could play in any corner. You know, the mm -hmm. village was very different than it is now. Mm -hmm. And he'd look at them, you know, from the car and say, Wonderful, isn't it? But they're all broke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's a coincidence. Joy and I, when we were first married, we developed our musical repertoire and our, our musical interest on the street of St. Augustine. Huh. We were street performers here for about nine years before... Wow before oh, all uh, got kicked it off. all got messy. Oh. Yeah. Oh. But it was fun. <laughs> yeah. I, I grew up with street music. It was, it was something I grew up with, and I just felt like everybody else should grow up with it, too. So. Wow. wow. Yeah. Well, uh, instruments, now, you're starting to play the, the ukulele, ukulele, you know. Um, if you had time, would it be any other instrument that you'd no, like to learn? No, that's more than enough. Uh, that's more than enough? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 I'm not him, uh -huh. no. <laughs> uh, Well, I your like things it. are all string. I like to have a life as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but your things are all string. Mm, if you much, had yeah. the time to learn another instrument, would there be something that oh, you God, would want? Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> Let him not bring a tuba in the bedroom. No, no, no. We have no. instruments in every room in our house. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe a piano. Maybe I like oh, a piano. Oh, my God. It is a beautiful... It is a beautiful <laughs> instrument. Well, speaking of that, I think a year ago I casually mentioned it would be kind of fun to play the ukulele. Well, that Christmas I received a ukulele. <laughs> and then the next Christmas hint, I got hint, another hint. ukulele. <laughs> yes, hint, hint, hint. Yeah. You, you go, well, you know, it's a, that, that's great when you, Santa Claus hears you when you speak out loud yeah, or whatever we're finding out. I, I don't know if I was real serious about <laughs> wanting a ukulele. Bingo. Well, and, and I you, was serious about finding He heard that, though. Yeah, yeah, but you started playing it. 
I did. Do you, do you like it? It's fun. Yeah, it's I, fun. I, actually, I like and it a lot. And it's such a portable little instrument. I mean, and the guitar is portable, but it's still a guitar. But the bass, is, the, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. And you also play that big <laughs> boom, 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 boom yeah, bass. Exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's incredible. So, on. what do you see? The f now, you write music. Some, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how about you, Joy? I've written like two songs. Oh, I well, no, but that's really that's how writer. you know Bach had to start with something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, let me ask you, how do you see your music evolving in the future? Wow, I, I, you know, I just hope that I can just continue to play. I just, you know, music is uh, is something that I have to do. I guess. Mm -hmm. How about you? I enjoy singing. Okay. I mean, I hope you know. And how did you come to sing? What was it? Why did you say, I want to sing? Because to, to sing is, I think it's always a little more challenging because, you, you know, it's like a public speaking. Okay? Well, I guess I, I grew up with, like, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and uh, Steve Winwood, and... I was Paul Mary and Beatles. Who I've Mary. gotten to yeah, see yeah. at our very own amphitheater, thanks uh -huh. to Mr. Ryan Murphy. Uh -huh. um, I just really have always liked harmony. I just like that, as, as a friend of his said a long time ago, and I always remembered it, Singing harmony is, is like hillbilly drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you yeah, That's right. I mean, I love that is singing funny. harmony. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, I mean, like he's it. always trying to get me to sing lead. And I, you know, I'm, I just mm -hmm. want to sing harmony. Well, I've heard you sing, and you're quite lovely. Oh, All right? Thanks. I've heard it's you fun. sing. And, uh, and when you're both together playing, mm. uh, it's, it's very, there's a certain magic to it. And, and, and that's why I have you here, because I think you're both very special. Thank you. And thank we've you. run out of time with that good note. I was going to say something negative, but <laughs> I ran out of time. So thank you again, both thank of you. Thank you so much. And thank you, thank you, for, thank you. for bringing so thank much joy for, in our community. <laughs> and uh, would you play you something for us? Absolutely, love will. to. When we come back, they made a promise. <laughs> We're going to listen to some of, uh, of Tommy and Joy playing some wonderful music. At Martinez and Associates, we can help you with many things. Number one is income for life throughout your retirement, which is very important. Number two would be Medicare choices, which are very confusing. Number three is a legacy for your loved ones. And finally, keeping you independent throughout retirement. My name is Tuli Martinez. Call this number. Y hablamos español. At St. Augustine Distillery, we're part of a new generation of American craft distillers. Family owned and operated, we are committed to making the best possible spirits using local agriculture. Our distillers make everything by hand, from mashing and blending to distilling and tasting each and every batch. We distill and bottle everything we sell, making sure that the spirits are just right before barreling and aging. Bottled by real people, we love showing our guests not only what we do, but why we do it. We're passionate about educating our guests to not only what goes into each bottle, but how to make the best possible cocktails. We love St. Augustine, and thanks to your purchases, we're able to give back to the community and help local organizations each and every day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. St. Augustine Distillery handmade with pride in the nation's oldest city. In any industry, the best known product is the one most frequently purchased. Think of industry leaders like Coke, Nike, and Starbucks. It's true in real estate too. The most successful realtors have strong personal brands. In fact, branding is especially important in the real estate industry. The National Association of Realtors tells us that reputation is the most important factor when choosing an agent. And another word for reputation is brand. It's not who you know, it's who knows you. Okay, this is a song for the gardeners and the vegetarians in the crowd. It's one called <laughs> Barnyard Dance. It was late one night in the pale moonlight All the vegetables went on a spree They put out a sign saying dance was free. There were peas and beans, cabbage and greens. It was the biggest sight you've ever seen. And when old man cucumber struck up the number, you ought to heard the vegetables scream. Ah! Well, the little turtle top did the backwoods flop. The cabbage tried to shift the and it could not stop. Little red beet shook his feet and the watermelon died from the cockeyed heat. Little tomato. Shook 
the shimmy with the sweet potatoes. And old man called and dropped in with a collie. Down at the barnyard dance this morning. Down at the barnyard dance the telephone. this week. Amazing. We'll be back next week. Thank you.